Oh, yes. Oh, the bread, the bread. <laughs> Little tin soldier, a little soldier, right? And now with an attitude. Hello! Who are you? Get up here! I don't like what you say. Now, let up. What's your attitude? What's your big beef with the Nazis? <laughs> What's my big beef? Yeah, the things that you're always knocking. My big beef? Every time you you're always knocking the Nazis. Oh, that's it's time for now, but not the night. <laughs> oh, I know. I think I'm doing it. I guess I can. You'll be a dead man. You'll be a dead man. People will pay you to be in your head. And I enjoy the career that I've been. <laughs> now, while Marty and I were off, uh, you know, we didn't work during the pandemic, and now we're back, we decided we need to breathe new life uh, into our show, because when we come back, we didn't want it to be dusty and sale. So we worked on it, we worked, we rolled up our sleeves, we got busy, and then we realized it was just you know, easier to change the name of the show. So welcome to the Dusty and Stale Show. Thank you. Now, let me tell you a little bit about our show tonight. We have a lot of comedy. We have some music, uh, a little nudity, a few swear words. So if you are in any way offended, please write me at my personal email, toughshitnorefunds at <laughs> Now we want to make this night a memorable one for you. So we have locked all the restrooms. Oh, yeah. Our show is performed without an intermission. However, you will feel there is an intermission because of a gigantic lull. And I will bring him out here in a minute. Now. <laughs> and now, folks, I am proud to introduce a man I think of as one of the great over-actors of all time. <laughs> One of the hardest working men in show business because it just doesn't come naturally to him. A man who looks like something you see yapping inside Kylie Jenner's purse. This man has appeared in countless of two hit movies. And he is the only Canadian who is not in Schitt's Creek. <laughs> Mr. Martin Short. Oh, I love this end the best. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Just because I say thank you doesn't mean you have to stop applauding. <laughs> done deserve this kind of ovation other than provide decades of quality entertainment. Please be seated. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you for that sitting ovation. So much effort. So appreciated. How are we on time? We just started. Oh, well, I'm going to keep this brief because I left my Uber driver waiting and you know how testy Will Smith can get. So. Whoa! Whoa! Slap that Thomas. one. Thomas. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> We're so glad 
<laughs> we could be here performing for you. We got an hour of material. We stretch it to two. Yes, we got some news you And we hope you've been told that laughter is the fastest way of spreading a cold. So tonight's about the friendship, a word that rhymes with dipshit. Yes, love me even more than I love. <laughs> Damn this Hollywood altitude! But listen, it's Jeff. Yes, of course. Let's try that top note one more time, shall we? Even more than I love more. <laughs> <laughs> Saved, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> and with those old clips, I mean, did Steve used to be funny or what? <laughs> and I have to say that for me, working with Marty Short is like World Cup soccer. Somehow, I just can't get into it. <laughs> <laughs> and may I say that you look fantastic. And I guess that's the benefit of looking 70 since you were 30. <laughs> <laughs> but I must say, it is such an honor for me to be standing next to a man who's a novelist, a playwright, a musician, a composer, and a legendary comedian. And let me say what an honor it is for me to be standing next to the man who is standing next to that man. <laughs> yeah. Well, the one thing that strikes me about you, Steve, more than anything else, is how unbelievably pale you are in person. <laughs> I mean, in the 80s, I think I once tried to snort you. <laughs> you look like someone who put a white toupee on a urinal. <laughs> I'm not trying to be negative here, but you look like Anderson Cooper froze to death on New Year's Eve. <laughs> oh my God. Burn! <laughs> you know what I love about touring around with Marty Short? No paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how Steve never lets it bother when people come up and say, Oh, big fan, Angela Lansbury. <laughs> Now, Marty and I feel that you, the audience, might like to get to know us just a little bit better. And the reason we feel that is because we are egomaniacs. <laughs> so we would like to share with you some of the hidden gems from our family photo collection. For example, uh, this adorable <laughs> shot of a two-year-old Marty Short. Uh, <laughs> this is right after I transition. <laughs> From what to what? I don't know. <laughs> Next photo of me at 11 months old. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. See, this is a perfect example of why women shouldn't drink during pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> this next photo was taken in Texas when I was just a young boy, and it's a photo of my first marriage. <laughs> Texas. Next. Oh, well, this is... 
picture of me as a young lad on uh, the beach with my parents. And that's really you, because at first I'm thinking it's a Winnie the Pooh travel book, you know, when he goes on vacation. I don't know. But what are you there? I would say a B cup. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know what's amazing about this photo? How well my parents are hiding their disappointment. Uh... <laughs> Next. Oh, now it's two years later, and this is uh, uh, me at age 15, and this is our first family trip from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to New York City, and we were the Latin Quarter nightclub. Wow, do you remember the name of the show? I sure do. It was the late Pete Arthur's one-woman show entitled, You Got It In There, Now Get It Out. <laughs> that email again is tough shit, don't be <laughs> <you? laughs> <At> gmail.com. <laughs> This next photo, uh, this was taken just before I was sent away to camp to pray the gay away. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am after I came back from the camp. <laughs> next! when you mix patriotism and legal Canadian weed. <laughs> now here I am, working at Disneyland's magic shop when I was just 15 years old. Oh, look, that's me hanging up there behind you. Look at that. I never noticed that. Can we take a closer look at that? Oh, yeah, I see that. And see, I got this dashing photo of you from high school. Look at that. You know what's amazing about this photo? It's a color photo. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this dashing photo of you from high school. Look at that. Oh. This is the year I was voted most likely to marry a cousin. <laughs> and it's even got the great point after. Yes, I see. <laughs> now this next photo. Um. Yeah. This is. John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, Mick Jagger, and me. And right after this photo was taken, we tested positive for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Next, here's our new show. Oh. All the murders in the building. With Selena Gomez. We love Selena, and she's such a great actress. In fact, when she met us, she acted like she knew who we were. Yeah. <laughs> our show is just like Steve at the urinal. It streams for 32 minutes. Uh, <laughs> and our last shot is actually Marty Short in the actual Oval Office. Yes, it is. It was 1994, and you're probably wondering what I'm doing. Well, I know what you're doing. The question is, did Bill Clinton take you up on your office? <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to bring back that fabulous musician. A man who appears every night on Jimmy Kimmel Live, Mr. Jeff Babco. Thank you, guys. You know, I never would Thank you, been. Jeff. Now, you know, <laughs> Steve and I actually met on the film Three Amigos. And what's amazing, that was 1986, and here we are, decades later, still working with each other. In fact, now we're touring all over the United States. Although at Steve's age, he doesn't really tour. He just kind of wanders <laughs> off, you know. But we catch him, and we bring him back. <laughs> Steve, I was telling everyone how sometimes you wander off, but then we catch you, and we bring you back. Yes, it's true. Now, now, Marty and I have been together so long, we can actually finish each other's careers. <laughs> we have not only worked together, but we've vacationed together. And for many years, over 25 years, we used to go to a little island in the Caribbean, St. Bart's, probably heard of it. And when we first started going there, it was just a funky little island that had ramshackle restaurants on the beach. But through the years, 
celebrities started coming, and that meant paparazzi started showing up. So one day, about 10 years ago, I said to Marty, hey, let's go down to the beach. And he said, are you crazy? One of those paparazzi is going to get some awful photo of us, and we'll be so embarrassed. And I said, what are you talking about? You look fantastic. So we went down to the beach, and we frolicked there for several hours. We sure did. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know you. I don't know. Anyway, so we go back to the house, and everything's fine. And then, about 10 days later, this photo appeared in the National Enquirer. <laughs> oh my dear God. It looks like Santa and his naughty. <laughs> such great times and you know Steve and I have an agreement the minute we stop having fun that's when we quit <laughs> Steve Martin ladies and gentlemen boy does Steve's cologne linger or what <laughs> well, was that punch -out? Although it is nice for me to perform with someone who's a potential organ donor, it does make you feel comfortable. You know, it's interesting, uh, a few minutes ago backstage when I was Googling my symptoms, I was thinking <laughs> and reflecting how Steve and I have become this great team. I mean, we're like Trump and the My Pillow guy without the sexual tension. <laughs> such a fan of Steve's work. I mean, I look at Steve on the screen and I'm whelmed. Um, <laughs> people always ask me, what is Steve really like? And I say, I don't know, you're his wife. Uh, <laughs> but to be hanging out with Steve Martin is a lot, a lot like the movie Deliverance. It's all fun and games until the banjos come out. Uh, <laughs> One time I asked you, I said, what would you be doing if you weren't a talented comedic actor? And he said, probably what you're doing. Uh, but I'm so excited to be here at the Hollywood Bowl tonight. Although that could be the Viking and Xanax talking, but I don't think so. In fact, I can't possibly express how excited I am to be here tonight because the Botox is fresh. <laughs> but the thing about performing live, which I love, is that you're forced to stay in shape. Listen, I've been on Jenny Craig more times than Mr. Craig, so <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. But that's a rule of show business. You've got to stay looking good, you know. And of course, there are many rules of show business. You always take penicillin after a Leonardo DiCaprio pool party. Uh, <laughs> When you pick up Tom Cruise, you must always remember the cradle of the neck. You never embark in a conversation with Kanye West without an exit strategy. Uh, anyway, on the cab ride here tonight, because the Hollywood Bowl wouldn't send a car, I was reflecting on the original impetus and, oh, for God's sake, how does something like that happen? Hey, say hello once again to the fabulous Jeff Babco, won't you? Oh, yes! Oh, Jeff's one of my oldest friends. Are you kidding? He was there when all three of my children were conceived. <laughs> I know that because I was out of town making a movie at the time. <laughs> anyway, well, I'm sorry. welcome, Jeffrey. We're glad to have you here. Great to be here. You know, I was thinking Hollywood Bowl has such a tradition of piano players, and I, I first saw, you know, my first concert here when I was just a little kid, and I was remembering, you know, the piano has such a tradition in and of itself as an instrument, and, um, you know, you might, might, not everybody reads the programs, and I thought I might just tell you a little bit verbally of the tradition of the piano as an instrument live and how the elements affect it as an instrument. You know, there's so much between this and this is, it looks like a simple box. I thought, gosh, you could explain just the strings with the hands. <laughs> <laughs> the Steinway. No, 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 you must stop now. No, no, no. 
Jesus, you're boring, Jeff. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Jeff's stripper name is Ambien, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> when Jeff goes out at night, he takes the term to Um <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm serious, Jeff. How long have you been doing this? I started playing piano, I was four years old. No, 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 I mean sucking the energy out of the <laughs> <laughs> No, listen, I love Jeff. And, and let me just say, out of all the piano players in the world, Jeff was available. Whoa! <laughs> I really do have the legs of a marionette, don't I? <laughs> I think the socks were a mistake, too. There's a leg all the way up here, very odd. <laughs> I think they're a little Wizard of Ozzy for their own good. Can't you just see the house falling on the witch and this thing happening? <laughs> How does a man sit on a piano? It's an odd decision. <laughs> this can't be good. Hi, how are you? Let me see it. That's my tie, I don't got pregnant. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, or anyways, it's less literate, like to say. <laughs> and the carriage ride over tonight, because I love to pamper myself. The driver said to me, what is the name of the film you made that I hated? And I thought, oh my god, he knows my work. And then it dawned on me, here's a man who hates me for my work, but doesn't know me well enough to hate me for who I am. So that's why I'm going to tell you a little bit about my life. Um, as I stated earlier, I'm Canadian. That's it? Small. It's very small. You know, we're yes. the aliens you don't deport. Um, right? I recently turned 72 years of age. Wow. And, uh... It's very odd, you know, suddenly being 72, it happens very quickly. Let's put it this way, at my age, I no longer put an angel on top of our Christmas tree because it feels like foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> my first love has always been the theater, then movies, then television, and then my family. Um, <laughs> more than anything in the world, I adored my parents. Uh, they had a mixed marriage different genders, it was the 50s, you know, and, um, but I adored them, especially my mom, God rest her soul, she's not dead yet, but it's just, <laughs> no, okay, we got it, I'll tell you that much, my father was a little more complicated, he was Irish, you know, so there was a lot of, I used to say, Dad, why make that noise? Just drink the gin, you know? <laughs> we only drank gin and ginger, no ice. Because the Irish feel that ice can be addictive. I don't know if anyone's ever had a parent who tippled. This is my father's look, very madman. He was a very successful guy, vice president of Canadian Steel, had a big bar in his office, but he'd never drink it for When he got home, <laughs> Make up for lost time. <laughs> and on the weekends, he'd really hit it. And on a typical Saturday afternoon, you look over, it wasn't like he was slurring, but you realized his hair was drunk. Yes. <laughs> and he was always teaching the secret of golf. You know, Marty. Uh, <laughs> I was talking to this Jewish chap in the club. Uh, Goldberg or I figured. Uh, Goldberg or Silver or Bronstein. I can't remember. I know there was a precious metal involved in his name. <laughs> and anyway, he said, he said to me, you know, Charlie, did you hear about the blind prostitute? You had to hand it to her. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> His joke, by the way. Right. And then my mother was, Yo, Charlie, you can't say that in front of the children on Sunday. And I was the youngest of five, so as the fights would start, you know, I'd sneak off to my attic bedroom. And oh, I loved my attic bedroom. But eventually I had to leave my attic. Mainly because I was 23 years of age, my parents had sold the house to other people. <laughs> but in the end, it was show business that lured me. The year, 
1972. That year, Off Off Broadway was obsessed with two things religious musicals and full frontal nudity. I auditioned for Jesus Christ Superstar, and I didn't get it. And then I auditioned for Hair, and I didn't get it. And then I auditioned for an all new tribal rock musical of the second greatest story ever told Step Brother to Jesus. And a terrible thing happened. I got it. <laughs> My father, Joseph, before he met the Virgin Mary, he loved my mother on some would-be Christmas night. The darkness covers what in the daylight sure but scary. Mother was a leper, and that ain't a pretty sight. And so he left her. She still had his love inside her. So on her broken leg, she crawled to Galilee. There were no wise men with gifts of gold and myrrh beside her. But nine months later, up came me. <laughs> and I learned, step from in a Jesus. I may be a bastard, but the lady seemed to like it. I want to talk to you about this. It's time. Oh. What's his problem? I don't know. Forty years later, and he's still the jerk. Come on, Jeff. I gotta show you something big. <laughs> I've known Marty for 35 years, and tonight is the first time I realized he leans to the right. <laughs> Now, if your bucket list includes listening to a banjo song in the middle of a comedy show, this is your lucky night. Yay! For those of you who don't know, there's a big difference between the banjo and the guitar. The uh, banjo has a round pot with a skin head stretched over the top that projects the sound outward, and the guitar can get you laid. <laughs> I'm a pretty decent banjo player. I have been compared to uh, some of the greats, like uh, Skip Rawlings and uh, Dusty Otis and Sonny Taylor. And if you don't know who they are, that's because I just made those names up. <laughs> <laughs> I was recently asked why I don't make as many films as I used to, and here's what I said. I said, honey, why is our daughter talking to me? Oh. I always like to take this moment to apologize for ticket prices because I know from your point of view, it's like, why is this? It's just two guys. Why is this so expensive? But it takes 135 people to put this show on. We have the orchestra, the musicians, <laughs> sound engineers, lighting directors. We have uh, someone to walk my Fitbit around. <laughs> Why 
man once said, to be able to play the banjo is to live forever, alone and in a band. <laughs> I'm turning 77 this year. Whoa. Sorry, I'm a little dyslexic. I meant to say 77. <laughs> I don't mind getting older. I, you know, I'm... Do you think these hearing aids make my ass look smaller? <laughs> I, all the musicians know it's very difficult to tune stringed instruments in an environment like this where the, the weather is changing and there's the heat of the lights and uh, it's got to be scientific thing, so. <laughs> you probably wouldn't understand, so. <laughs> I can explain it if you want. With the what Photons come down and agitate the protons, and they bump up against the gluons, and the gluons, so that the moron. <laughs> right. Steep Canyon Rangers, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I should say 
playing the Grammy Award winning Steve Canyon. We've been playing, we've been playing together for so long. How, how long have we been playing together? About 12 years. 12 years, oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, on guitar. <laughs> <laughs> And on mandolin we have the mandolin guy. So, <laughs> now, uh, we're going to play a new song uh, for you now. And if you're like me, whenever I hear a band say they're going to play a new song, I always think, oh, please don't. <laughs> Just play your hits. But, we don't have any. <laughs> and we're not getting any. So this is a new song, and it's called, I Can Play the Banjo. <laughs> Sometimes we write a song, but mainly we get to know each other just that little bit better. And I said to Marty, "No, we're not going to be doing this forever. We've got to get a photo of the Rangers in their tour bus, and we got a fantastic photo. Do you have it here?" <laughs> anyway. <laughs> 
like being out here alone without my work wife because I get to do the things I've been Be still, Moses. And where can people purchase this album? In the merchandise areas. Whoa. <laughs> well, I can't wait to download my copy from a Chinese website, but here they are, <laughs> the Steep Canyon Rangers. <laughs> Tribe a tribe faster, make a good run. Down the Springfield line, under the shining sun. Fly like an airplane and don't pull up short till you break for Grand Central Station, New York.
magician and juggler, but what you may not know is I also started out whew, this is a long way, as a ventriloquist, <laughs> and I'm here to show you some of those skills tonight. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my little wooden-headed friend, Jiminy Glick. Oh, I'm so excited to be here at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, I love Hollywood, Steve. I've always loved Hollywood. <laughs> When are you going to ever stop moving? <laughs> to get to the center. I love Hollywood. You know I love Hollywood. You know I love Hollywood. Oh, wow. I love the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Hollywood ladies. Jim, look at that woman over there. She's wearing a low dress. Oh, I wish my fingers were scissors. And I'd snip those scraps and release the hostage. <laughs> oh, I love the What? I love the ladies' bosoms. Oh, I do love ladies' bosoms. Because you know why? They're like martinis. One's not enough, three or too many. <laughs> and what a handsome dude you are. Look at you. Your teeth are so white. Your smile is like an email from Grandma. All caps. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jimmy, you're one, of the, okay, you're one of the world's great critics of style. So I thought, well, let's take a look at some people in the news and you can give us your opinion on their style. Oh, I like what you just tried to say. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> So who's our first celebrity? Oh, Kim Jong. Yeah. Well, I love like Kim. She's a very mm -hmm. French woman. But she wears too much makeup, Steve. Can we see Kim with all the, without all that makeup? <laughs> <laughs> but you can't deny the lady has style. That's right. Who's next? Oh. Bernie Sanders. Well, I like Bernie Sanders because he looks like a used tissue that just sprung to life. <laughs> <laughs> And you'll see, he still wants to run for president, but how would he have time to run for the presidency and sit in the balcony and heckle the Muppets? <laughs> and he always looks so tired. Can we see Bernie with makeup? <laughs> Who's next? The Queen of England. Ruff, 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 ruff. Gee, I'd like to mount her. I'm shocked. Oh, no, I'm drawn to the elderly. I've always been drawn. You know, she just turned 96, Steve. And for her birthday, Prince Charles gave her a beautiful engraved bracelet. Oh, what did it say? Do not resuscitate. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Oh, Ooh. former governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo. He got accused of inappropriate behavior. Well, he got confused. He thought harass was two words. <laughs> 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 By the way, that's his orgasm face. Just so you know. <laughs> Who's next? William oh. Shatner, an icon. Do you know, Steve, he is 91 years old. Oh. Take that, diet and exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Who do we have next? Hugh Jackman, the greatest showman. The greatest show. Well, this, is a, this is a very interesting fact, Steve. Do you know what his porn name is? No, what? Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Ooh, Madonna. Madonna. She's back in the news. Yes. Yeah. You know, she's 63 years of age, and she's dating a man who's 28 years of age. She's saying how many times 28 goes into 63. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's clever. Who's next? Elon Musk. Oh, Elon, by the way. Now, by the way, Steve, this is interesting. Musk is also a scent that ladies like. Do you know where you get the musk scent from, Steve? Well, uh, yes, I do scientifically. It's extracted from the anal gland of the male musk deer. Well, I was going to say Walmart, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Oh. oh! Look, it's the anal gland of the male musk deer. <laughs> <laughs> Who's last? Oh, Kim Jong -un. Jong un. He looks like a bouncer in a lesbian bar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jimmy, I can't take this anymore. I'm gonna put you down. Oh, no. Yes. Well, 
This is going to take a while. Here you go. Does the other guy sort of have an extra number? I'm going to give me a quick claim to the deck. <laughs> you know, it probably looks to you like we're just having a lot of fun up here. Uh, but there's a lot of work that goes into every show. And Marty and I have a ritual we do before each show backstage. And one night, tonight, I noticed that the backstage crew of a video was videoing it. And I thought that would be interesting to show the audience. So here is Marty and I preparing for this evening's show. <laughs> Let's bring back Marty, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let me just say something, Stephen. Yeah, what? Stephen Glenn Martin, and I don't want to embarrass you. Go ahead. But it is true that I would not be on this stage tonight were it not for Steve Martin. So thank you for driving. Okay. <laughs> you know, Steve, and this is, by the way, playing the Hollywood Bowl is like a dream of a lifetime, and you're the greatest audience you could ever dream of having. Yeah. <laughs> Forever. Well, of course, I thought about that, but um, we're not going to live forever. And what's sad to me about that is you won't be able to hear the wonderful things I would say at your memorial. So I took the liberty of writing your eulogy <laughs> so you can hear these things now. Well, that is so ironic because you know what I did? I did the same thing. <laughs> Let's read them, shall we? Let's do it. Jeff, this is sort of a sad moment, so could you play something sad for us? No, no, not sad enough. Anything sadder? <laughs> no, do you have something really, really sad? <laughs> so, Marty, I dedicate this eulogy to you. Much of a turnout. <laughs> Marty did not want to be cremated. Too late. <laughs> I'll always be haunted by Marty's last words. You'll never get me, monkey pox. <laughs> Marty was taken away from us too soon, but sadly, not before he played Jack Frost in Santa Claus 3. <laughs> Steve Martin, but this hardly seems the time nor the place. <laughs> oh, Steve! Steve, you bland, overrated, white-haired son of a bitch, where'd you go? I know Steve is looking down at us right now, because he always looked down at everybody. And I learned so much from Steve. For example, Steve taught me that you don't need to restrict the urinals. Just number one. <laughs> you know, Marty was always popular with the ladies, even at the end. He had a wonderful girlfriend, sexy, beautiful, so realistic. <laughs> but no one can replace Marty, though Billy Crystal's been looking really strong in rehearsals. Oh, Steve! It's so hard to look at you in that open casket. Motionless, colorless, stiff. It's so lifelike. <laughs> the good news is, with Steve gone, download should be so much faster on Pornhub. <laughs> Steve is such a great dad, and you can tell that from his kids. They're so polite. You go to his house and they say, Would you like anything, Mr. Short? Can I get you a drink, Mr. Short? Could you give this note to the police, Mr. Short? <laughs> and I'd like to close this tribute to Marty by showing you his favorite picture of himself. Oh. Partner! Here we go. <laughs> Marty, I see a piano over there. Should we? Yes. Ow. Oh. 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 Oh.
know what I'm like. Why don't you go to their house? It's a Me Too thing. <laughs> You know, at each stage of our lives and career, Marty and I have admired and been inspired by so many comedians, the older ones who came before us, and also the younger comedians that we admire so much. And we picked out a few of our favorite lines from some of our favorite comedians, like this one from Stephen Wright. I was walking down the street wearing glasses when the prescription ran out. <laughs> <laughs> and our friend Norm MacDonald, There are only two categories of cliff diving, grand champion and stuff on a rock. <laughs> or the great Robin Williams. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh incredible. Oh, I wonder what chairs think about all day. Oh, here comes another asshole! <laughs> oh, Mr. Hutton. And the great Richard Pryor. He said. I'm not addicted to cocaine. I just like the way it smells. <laughs> <laughs> or the brilliant Rodney Dangerfield. I was making love to my wife and she had this faraway look in her eye and I said, is there someone else? And she said, there must be. <laughs> <laughs> and Ellen DeGeneres said, my grandmother started walking five miles a day when she turned 60. She's 97 now. And we don't know where the hell she is. <laughs> <laughs> or Gary Shandling. When I'm not in a relationship, I shave one leg. That way, when I sleep, it feels like I'm with a woman. <laughs> and Bob Newhart said, I don't like country music, but I don't denigrate those who do. And for those of you who like country music, Denigrate means put down. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the great Phyllis Diller. <laughs> you see these two things here? You can turn these dials all night, and the picture doesn't get any better. <laughs> <laughs> and what's a more appropriate way to end our show tonight than with this beautiful song? by the great Stephen Sondheim. Is a little rich Are we a pair Me here at last on the ground You win In Where are the clowns? Isn't it bliss? Don't you approve? One who keeps tearing around, one who can't move. You know, I'm going to let that pass. <laughs> because you are my Johnny Depp, and I am your Amber.
Broadway, we're celebrating the Hollywood Bowl's 100th birthday. Yes. <laughs> Coincidentally, that's exactly how long it will take you to get your car out tonight. Thank you. Hollywood Bowl. For the safety of those around you, please do not empty any coolers onto the walkways. You may be exiting the bowl through residential neighborhoods, so please keep noise to a minimum. We wish you safe travels and look forward to seeing you again soon. Gracias por asistir al Hollywood Bowl. Por la seguridad de aquellos a su alrededor, no vacíen sus hieleras en los pasillos. Es posible que al salir del bowl se encuentren con vecindarios residenciales, así que por favor mantengan el ruido al mínimo. Les deseamos un feliz viaje y esperemos verlos de nuevo.
season two.